Ezekiel sees the throne room of God. The account of the prophecy given by Ezekiel is not a fable from another time and place. He was a real man who lived in a real place and had remarkable visions of God on a real day. The prophetic ministry of Ezekiel was initiated during a time when Judah was still an independent kingdom. Do you wonder what heaven looks like? What a once in a lifetime opportunity it would be to enter the throne room of God and observe the activities that are taking place in heaven. The word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel the priest. God's word not only came to Ezekiel, the priest, but it came remarkably. The meaning of the name Ezekiel can be interpreted as the strength of God or strengthened by God. Ezekiel 1.4, New American Standard Bible. As I looked, behold, a high wind was coming from the north, a great cloud of fire flashing intermittently and a bright light around it, and in its mists, something like gleaming metal in the midst of the fire. Ezekiel first noticed a fierce whirlwind coming from the north. Then he saw four living creatures, each with four faces, lion, ox, eagle, man, four wings, straight feet, and hands under its wings. The creature represents God's attributes seen in creation, his majesty, power, swiftness, and wisdom. The Lord of glory sat on a throne above the firmament. There was a wheel, or rather a wheel within a wheel, beside each of the living creatures. This vision of God's glory came before Ezekiel's call to the prophetic ministry. We see parallels with John in the book of Revelation. However, in comparison, Ezekiel's provides a much more detailed description of the four living creatures. Ezekiel 1, 5-9 And within it there were figures resembling four living beings, and this was their appearance. They had human form. Each of them had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight and their feet were like a calf's hoof, and they sparkled like polished bronze. Under their wings on their four sides were human hands. As for the faces and wings of the four of them, their wings touched one another. Their faces did not turn when they moved, each went straight forward. The four living creatures are also found in Revelation. Revelation 4, 6-9 and in front of the throne, there was something like a sea or large expanse of glass, like the clearest crystal. In the center and around the throne were four living creatures who were full of eyes in front and behind, seeing everything and knowing everything that is around them. The first living creature was like a lion, the second creature like a calf, ox, the third creature had the face of a man, and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes all over and within, underneath their wings. And day and night they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, the Omnipotent, the Ruler of all, who was and who is and who is to come, the unchanging eternal God. Whether the living creatures give glory and honor and thanksgiving to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever. There is no indication that these beings are figurative in the text that describe them. Rather, they are presented as real, actual beings. The four living creatures, literally beings, are a special, exalted order of angelic being or cherubim. This is made abundantly clear by the close proximity of these individuals to the throne of God. Ezekiel 1, 12-20 suggests that they're in constant motion around the throne. Ezekiel 1, 12 to 20. And each went straight forward. Wherever the spirit was about to go, they would go, without turning as they went. Among the living beings, there was something that looked like burning coals of fire, like torches moving back and forth among the living beings. The fire was bright, the lightning was flashing from the fire, and the living beings moved rapidly back and forth like flashes of lightning. Now as I looked at the living beings, I saw one wheel on the ground beside the living beings for each of the four of them. Regarding the appearance of the wheels and their construction, they gleamed like chrysolite, beryl, olivine, and the four were made alike. Their appearance and construction were a wheel set at a right angle within a wheel. Whenever they moved, 
They went in any one of their four directions without turning as they moved. Regarding their rims, they were so high that they were awesome and dreadful, and the rims of all four of them were full of eyes all around. Whenever the living beings moved, the wheels moved with them, and when the living beings rose from the earth, the wheels rose also. Wherever the spirit went, the beings went in that direction, and the wheels rose along with them, for the spirits or life of the living beings was in the wheels. Revelation chapter 5 verse 6 through 14 explain the functions or responsibilities of the four living creatures. They prostrate themselves before the Lamb, who is Jesus Christ, and offers the same reverence to him as they did the Father. Proof positive of the deity of Jesus Christ. Revelation 5, 6-9, Amplified Bible And there between the throne, with the four living creatures, and among the elders I saw a lamb, Christ, standing, bearing scars and wombs, as though it had been slain, with seven horns, complete power, and with seven eyes, complete knowledge, which are the seven spirits of God who have been sent on duty in all the earth. And he came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, Christ, each one holding a harp and golden bowl full of fragrant incense, which are the prayers of the saints, God's people. And they sang a new song of glorious redemption, saying, Worthy and deserving are you to take the scroll and to break its seals, for you were slain, sacrificed, and with your blood you purchased people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Along with the twenty-four elders, they have harps and golden vials full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They have harps and golden vials full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, and they are accompanied by twenty-four elders. In the Old Testament, harps are frequently associated with worship, Harps are also associated with prophecy. The purpose of the four living creatures also has to do with declaring the holiness of God and leading in worship and adoration of God. Additionally, the four living creatures play a role in the execution of God's justice in some fashion. These beings are an exalted order of angels whose purpose is primarily that of worship. Revelations 19.4 Amplified Bible when the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures also fell down and worshipped God who sits on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Later on, Ezekiel was able to determine that these extraordinary beings were cherubim, which are angels that surround God and possess their own distinct power and glory. Before his fall, Satan was among the cherubim covering God's throne. Ezekiel 28, 14-16 you were the anointed cherub who covers and protects, and I placed you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst of the stones of fire, sparkling jewels. You were blameless in your ways, from the day you were created until unrighteousness and evil were found in you. Through the abundance of your commerce, you were internally filled with lawlessness and violence, and you sinned. Therefore I have cast you out as a profane and unholy thing from the mountain of God, and I have destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Since the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God among Israel, Yahweh was sometimes called He who dwells between the cherubim. 1 Samuel 4.4 4. Amplified Bible So the people sent word to Shiloh, and from there they carried the Ark of the Covenant to the Lord of Hosts who sits above the cherubim, and the two sons of Eli and Phinehas were with the Ark of the Covenant of God. The Appearance of the Living Creatures Ezekiel 1, 10-14 In John's vision of heaven, they appear to be four different creatures, and each of these creatures has one of the four faces listed above. Since the beginning of time, students of the Bible, students in general, and artists have been inspired by these four different faces. Exodus 13, 21-22 The presence of the Lord 
was going before them by day in a pillar, column of cloud, to lead them among the way, and in the pillar of fire by night to give them light, so that they could travel by day and by night. He did not withdraw the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, from going before the people. The raging fire engulfing itself is a reminder of the burning bush that Moses saw, which burnt but did not consume itself. We read, Brightness was all around it and radiating out of its midst. This radiating brightness is an expression of the glory of God. Four remarkable beings were notable from within this whirlwind of God's presence. Ezekiel later identified these remarkable creatures as cherubim in Ezekiel 10, 8-15. These are angels of unique power and glory surrounding God. Cherubim first appear in the Garden of Eden, those who guarded the way of the Tree of Life with a flaming sword. Genesis 3, 24. We read, They had the likeness of a man. Ezekiel noted that they were not men, they were angelic beings, not human beings. Yet they had the likeness of a man. In general form and structure, they looked like men. As the description following will show, they were unlike any person on earth. The artistic designs of cherubim, commanded to be made with the tabernacle, temple, and the Ark of the Covenant, emphasize their wings as we see in Exodus 25:20. So what are we to take away for ourselves today in reading these vivid images of the throne room of God? Number one, see the Lord in his splendor. Be struck by the glory of the Lord. Understand what he asks of his people since he is the almighty God. He demands submissiveness from us, a yielding heart that trembles at the very word of God and desires to obey. Number two, the greatness of God. One seeking to digest or communicate this chapter should not bog down into the details of most of its background, important as they are for understanding the details of John's portrait. One should instead place all the details, expounded in their context of their primary Old Testament background, in the broader perspective of their function, to reveal the greatness of God's court, hence his own greatness. Thus, they also show striking contrast with the pretense of the earthly ruler's arrogant pomp. The text invites us to worship, today no less than at its first reading in Ephesus. It also invites us to relinquish our fear of human grandeur, which pales before the majesty of the eternal God with whom we have become intimate. Number 3. God is in charge. Because chapters 4 and 5 depict God's judgment on the world, they transport us to a celestial perspective and remind us of who is in power here on earth. We ought to worship God in the manner that he is due and allow him to bestow upon us the experiences that he sees fit. The glory of God is the primary focus of the revelation that John gets. Even the judgments that he will soon witness will honor God and explain his activity. Rather from merely satisfying our curiosity about the future, this revelation seeks to enlighten us about God's splendor. 